I work for uh, Dave Ward. If you, you probably remember Dave because he probably dumped uh, a zettabyte of information earlier uh, on you. And if you don't remember him, at least you remember his shirt. <laughs> but um, his, socks. his socks as well, <laughs> everything. Um, so the, the idea in the next, I'm going to go quite quick. And the idea is just to, you know, the, the mission from Nation Team was, you know, Guillaume, can you try to, you know, make sense of all these uh, uh, amount of information we've been uh, sharing today? And it's actually quite a lot. It's very impressive. And so I'll be humble in this exercise because uh, the goal is really where all this is going. You know, what's the trajectory for this uh, industry and what are the new things which are going to emerge? Um, so I'll start by saying that what, I, what we're witnessing here, all the stuff we've been discussing today about, is really just called digitization. And um, as I'm probably sure you're, uh, as I'm sure you're probably aware, this is happening across a number of industry at the moment, not just media. And um, uh, working with Cisco and with uh, with Dave's team, uh, this is something which we are witnessing across different uh, media uh, uh, industry verticals at the moment. And media is not just different. So allow me for a moment to just have a look at everything we've discussed from the perspective of a slightly different industry. So I didn't, um, I didn't uh, bring the wrong deck for today, but I want to talk about factory uh, and um, uh, manufacturing and what's happening in uh, something which is called industry uh, 4.0, which is a very important trend. Um, these guys, manufacturing things are going through tremendous um, disruption and changes at the moment. And uh, if we look at the characteristics of uh, what is this um, uh, digitization trends for the factory, first of all, it starts with connecting everything with IP. Uh, and happens that they have like some legacy uh, connectivity technologies. In this case, a lot of this is under the family called SCADA, so it's not called SDI, it's called SCADA. But really, a lot of people had a hard time believing that IP would actually connect all this production manufacturing chain, uh, and it's actually happening extremely fast. And there is a massive injection of IoT technologies, connecting more and more things, generating more and more data, massive amount of sensors being added. So this is happening in, a, <laughs> in an industry <laughs> not too far from, uh, from, from ours here. Uh, cloud to fork virtualization, I'm going to talk uh, quickly about it a bit later, software defined workflows. So really the fact that you can software define what the behavior of the production chain at a point in time. And this is really a, a, a new idea, which is uh, not really new anymore because this is being deployed as, as we speak. Just in time personalization production. One of the famous examples is if you want to buy a pair of sneakers, whichever brand, Adidas, Nike, more and more, you're going to just go and design it the way you want uh, on their website and have it produced. So what happened is that really, at a point in, just in time, the entire production chain is going to be uh, programmed just for your, just to produce your personal, I was just about to say personal content, your personal um, uh, product you want to buy. It's all data and AI driven and um, there is an in increasing role of collaboration across the different workers and um, even the machines or the process is becoming collaborative. So it's possible to interface with, so basically machines are talking, uh, including in natural language, to interface with the workers around the, the, the production chain. So I'll stop here because I'm sure that you all got, you know, the parallel I'm drawing here, but if you think that you know, media is not evolving fast enough in this direction, I think that media is going there very fast, actually faster than many other verticals. But other verticals are going there as well. And as Cisco, because we love infrastructure and we love these horizontal stories, we look at these different verticals and we're like, oh my god, these are very similar patterns happening. And this, this is where we can actually bring experience from one vertical to the other. So um, back to media. What's the big deal uh, about um, the, um, what, what's happening to our industry at this point in time? So there is um, something very simple. We've been talking about production and the fact that it's going to be IP-based, virtualized, software-defined. Well, that's it. There's been this big divide uh, in our industry between, I'm simplifying, but between production and distribution. And this divide is going to go away, being entirely 
um, the, the, the whole food chain, the, the, the whole um, supply chain of media being finally based on similar technologies is going to enable what we again see in classic manufacturing, the ability to program and connect both production and logistic and distribution into one consistent con continuum. So this is where we are going. Um, so uh, these are some of the slides uh, which uh, I've used recently at a conference called Yana, You're Not Alone, which was sort of um, pre-IETF uh, discussion. Uh, and the idea was really to try to discuss what are the big, big problems we are trying to solve and we believe will be solved, solved in the near future thanks to this um, uh, new infrastructure which uh, we are going to be able to uh, get hold of. So the first thing is the scale. I think that uh, these days we are still probably uh, picking max around 8 million concurrent over the top streaming, which is a lot, but is not yet the scale of uh, the good old broadcast, and we need to get there. So we'll get there, um, nationwide, worldwide, um, and not just fixed, but also mobile. So 5G is going to help here. Uh, and we don't want to scale just the premium content, but we also want to add all these additional sources of contents uh, which uh, can become important for 10 minutes and can be uh, originated from UGC or semi-pro uh, type of environment. We want a better consumer experience. Paul just talked a lot about all these uh, advanced formats which we want to consume. Uh, so it's not just you know, 4K HDR, uh, but also um, all sorts of you know, AR, VR, whatever, finishing with an R. <laughs> I'll talk about MR in a second, actually, which I think is really interesting. Uh, and um, I think we've made the point already, but the paradox is that today, if you look at classic ABR OTT, we're actually delivering a unicast stream eventually to millions of users, but we are filling this with, as we were discussing earlier up here, with the same type of content. And obviously we can take advantage of it to personalize this. Um, how we can do this, we'll see in a second. Um, and actually have more of the automated editing and, and also um, injection of um, synthetic content. Um, Finally, better control and monetization, of course, all the time. Um, I, w I was afraid that I would be the first to pronounce the word blockchain today. I'm not, phew. But um, <laughs> blockchain is going to play a role here. Uh, and um, I've seen some very interesting startup folks uh, looking at nano monetization, so really monetizing, of course, completely seamlessly for the end user, monetizing, you know, every, every second every line of content being read every second of video being watched you know and just keeping the um, uh, incrementing you know the, the the monetization like this so there's really some uh, interesting stuff coming here and fraud detection ultimately it will just be, be an ai problem as uh, as we know uh, and we are getting there so a lot of really interesting um, ambition and uh, problem to solve at scale for this industry we are getting there so what's the what are the infrastructure fundamentals for this? Well, uh, Dave discussed a lot of this in detail this morning. I'm going to summarize 5G and hybrid uh, information-centric networking. These are the new, the next generation uh, internet, if you want, uh, coming uh, in the coming months here, which is going to enable a lot of this. Um, not just with a more efficient transport layer, this is important, but also with the ability to um, enable multi-access. So uh, basically, it's not like you're on Wi-Fi or you're on LTE or you're on whichever 5G new uh, radio technology. You're actually on all these networks simultaneously. Uh, and that's really where we want to uh, bring the industry. Uh, move to IP, same tea, whichever flavor, 2110 has a good sort of horizon. Uh, I don't have to discuss this more. It's been uh, well discussed today, but this is obviously a key ingredient. And the hybrid multi-cloud, really the ability to software define just in time, for instance, an entire studio, because this is what we need at this point in of the day for this particular show, and reconfigure the entire studio um, an hour later for a different show. And having this infrastructure pooling effect, which um, actually is very important, especially uh, for, uh, I guess, teams like Paul, you know, at. Um, uh, at NBC, at uh, NBCU, because uh, when you want to experiment new things, 
Well, basically, you need to be able to not just present PowerPoint. You need to be able to do pilots. And if, when you start uh, this type of initiative, you say, well, you know what? We have a new uh, interesting um, idea, and we want to do this new uh, mixed reality format, but actually we need five racks of um, G GPUs just to make a test. So, you know, if you have $2 million, we'll make a test and see if this works. Uh, this is difficult. If you say that you're just going to summon somewhere from uh, a shared infrastructure this capacity for a couple of days, experiment this format, see if it works or not, then you have much better chance to go somewhere. And this is really where we see this kind of infrastructure unleashing a new wave of creativity in the industry. Um, we've touched upon advanced metadata, the importance of content ID, and the object-based approach, which is going to be uh, fundamental to actually creating these next generation uh, experiences. Uh, there is also, behind the advanced metadata, a lot of AI, because one of the role of AI, that's not the only one, is going to uh, be able to create additional uh, metadata uh, from uh, all these um, videos and uh, sensors uh, which are coming into, um, uh, you know, across the, uh, uh, the whole industry. So real quick, um, all the technologies I've just mentioned are mapped here alongside this um, supply chain, logistic chain. Uh, but to be honest, I think a better way to look at this picture is to break a little bit the linear, although still true in a way, especially for life, the linear sequential way representation, but actually map these technologies literally around uh, one big cloud. So um, this is, you know, this more like circular way with all the functions, both of production and consumption being plugged into one sort of continuous cloud platform, which perimeter is, will be software defined. And this is also a lot of uh, the next gen IT technologies, including cybersecurity, and they've alluded to it on which uh, we're working uh, at the moment. Uh, this is probably sort of a better way to think about the representation of where our industry is going. So this platform is basically, this is probably roughly what your platform as a media company will look like uh, in the future. And on the side, I've indicated a collaboration because again, the collaboration, you know, now that any, any job or any function can be located pretty much everywhere, pretty much you can produce a show with folks, I'm going to exaggerate and simplify for one sec, but you can, in the future, we'll be able to produce a show just with folks working from home, all being connected to this cloud. Uh, then the ability uh, for these folks to collaborate uh, remotely between them is going to be really important. So that's why we see collaboration just as a fundamental comp component of digitization. And again, not just for this industry, same in factories, same in smart cities, and many other domains. Um, one last uh, point I want to mention is the, the role of uh, 5G, HICN, future network, and the ability to run workloads, not just across different types of clou clouds, again, Dave went through this quite extensively earlier, but also at the edge. And so the interest of running a workload at the edge, if we take, for instance, all the good work which um, we see from the Tremors project and all these uh, object-based assets, which can be um, today um, arranged to create this multi-screen experience, probably similar type of assets could be arranged to really create completely personalized um, streams. If you want, you can, you can, you know, really like having your personal director sitting somewhere in the cloud, AI uh, augmented or enabled, and really at the edge, creating this version of the show just for you, your preference, your test your taste, and that's really an interesting perspective. And even if we're talking about an AR or MR or VR experience, low latency, a lot of this can be uh, run in the cloud as long as this is happening at the edge for latency issues or latency reasons. So this is one of the really um, exciting perspective coming uh, around 5G and HICN type of uh, networks. Uh, that's it, um, and so just to insist on what I've just said. You've seen this demo, well, or this concept already, Tribal TV, which um, was actually uh, something which um, the team um,
put together a little while ago. What's really cool about this demo or this concept is not so much the fact that you have all this social interaction around. What's really cool is that these are multiple versions of the same show, completely linear or passive. Remove all the interaction. Just you know, look at this from a passive standpoint. You're getting a personalized version of this show. I you know, want to see more of this team versus that team. I want more replay. I want less replay. Of course, colleagues at TVS wants more replay. <laughs> Uh, we want, um, you know, I want more um, statistics, I want less statistics, and it's really possible to tune these to, well, tribes, so groups of interest, and ultimately to each individual. And so this is where we are going with this, um, uh, this type of platform I showed uh, earlier. We've talked about AR, VR, MR, so I'm really excited about MR. I think, so MR is really mixed reality. So. Think, uh, so the, the subtle difference between AR and MR is that MR actually is based on a full, um, what we call uh, environmental perception model of a given real space, so that when you insert synthetic objects, you actually manage occlusion, right? So that's the, that's the important thing. And again, I see a lot of startups doing very interesting stuff in this field, uh, lots of interesting uh, work happening, and uh, this is going ultimately to revolutionize not only some of the content format, but advertising as well. This particular DHL example, by the way, is a, phys is a real physical ad campaign these guys run. But you can see how we could transpose this in an MR uh, type of uh, world. And, you know, among many other exciting things, I'm personally super excited. And, you know, we have amazing presenters today. Sports, we know, is a very important um, type of content, especially for live TV. I'm not sure where this is going, but I know that with massive addition of IoT, drones, sensor, biometrics from the athlete, athletes, uh, ability to really enhance the, the show with a lot of um, MR type of uh, rendering at the end, you know, what we'll watch on TV in just five years from now is going to be really, really different from what we're used to today, although there's been a lot of progress recently. So this is very exciting. And all, think about all this with a dose of personalization. This is going to be really exciting. One last thing. I'm done. One last important thing. Um, get to know your industry startups. I was at VivaTech uh, 10 days ago. So VivaTech is one of these recent events which um, is now happening in Paris, uh, whatever, one of these innovation trade shows. Turned out that uh, VivaTech is um, you know, on a good trajectory, getting quite su successful. So the, if you've never been there, <clears throat> the concept is that you have all these large corporates lending there from different industry verticals. And they all land in the show surrounded with their um, partner startups, their satellite startups. And the message behind this is really that the industry players, again, in media, but other verticals as well, who are going to lead uh, and who will emerge from this decade as the digitized leader of their industry, are those who will have <coughs> been able to augment themselves with startups. Because the amount of creativity, you know, as much as we are all part of really cool and powerful organizations, the amount of creativity which is happening in the startup ecosystems in UK, in France, in Israel, in Germany, of course, in the US, and many countries in the world is just amazing. I was struck just to find that last year at IBC, as you probably noticed, for the first time, IBC organized a startup sort of mini event conference. And I was like, yeah, this is good. I'm not even sure they are doing it again this year, but we need more of this. Get to know your startups. I'm personally meeting a lot of them, and it's just amazing what's uh, brewing there. And if you don't know them, you might be surprised. Uh, so internal innovation is very important, but you want to keep an eye on these guys and find a way to open your platform, open your APIs, so that they can also build on top of you. That's all. Thank you very much. Does anyone have, yeah, we have a question over yeah, here. Question if you, the, sorry, uh, if you just wait for the mic and we'll bring it over. Thank you. 
Thank you. I have a question on live analytics. What do you do exactly? Because do you partner with a company providing the, the data? Or because I'd like to know the, the role of Cisco. So um, what do we do on live analytics? Um, number of things. So I, I, I'd say that we're more like enabling, with, again, with this type of infrastructure, ability to deploy workloads, ability to onboard more and more IoT devices and sensors. I'd say that we are more in a sort of uh, enabling type of um, uh, capacity than really us doing a lot of uh, life analytics. This said, <coughs> this is another domain where there are interesting connections across completely different industry verticals. So it turns out that if you want to, as we do currently, if you want to um, get um, uh, a car to park itself automatically in a parking, you need to actually um, deploy um, video analytics and AI models, which again I mentioned as environmental uh, perception model, which are very similar to what you want to do to actually, for instance, analyze the pitch uh, from a sports game and understand what's going on. So there are always connections, but I would say there's just a lot of activity uh, and a lot of startups which are trying to bring ever more um, relevant, accurate um, metadata and analytics, uh, video analytics coming from, uh, from, from different videos. Of course, uh, especially in the production um, domain, a lot of you guys are doing uh, pretty advanced stuff as well, which is, which, is, which is cool. So I would say, look at us as an enabler more, more than you know, us bringing the solution here. Thank you. Welcome. Do you have any further questions, or perhaps we could take them over afternoon sure. tea? Yeah. Thank you so very thank much. Thank you, Liam, for the summary. I think the media industry has clearly got a very bright future and lots of exciting things happening over the coming months and years. Um, and thank you to you all as well for attending today. Um, we hope they found the session useful. If you're not already part of the WebEx team space, you can, it's not too late to join because we will be sharing a lot of the material after the event as well, um, and also a survey link. So some of you may have come to our event back in November. We're running a couple of these every year, and we're looking to make them even better and more relevant. So I'd really appreciate your feedback as well. Uh, so thanks again, and yeah, let's go and enjoy some afternoon tea. Thank you. Thank you.